All right, so in this video, we are going to try to relate uh, this um, idea of a relay and normally open and normally closed contacts in a coil to an actual PLC program. We saw last time in our video that when we have a coil like this, which is represented by um, this symbol here, okay, this is our coil, and when we have a coil, uh, it's like having this physical uh, coil here that goes around uh, this uh, PLC. All right, and when the coil is energized, it can move this iron core back and forth, and a spring is there so that it keeps it in one state or the other. In this case, uh, it tries to keep it in this state where these contacts are normally closed and these contacts are normally open. So let's click switch over to some actual PLC software. This is the Click programming software. It's free, uh, and the PLCs are um, very cheap and easy to get. Okay, so these are our rungs or our ladders. This is our ladder diagram, and these are all the rungs of the ladder. And you see here we um, we don't have anything written, um, and we have contacts normally open normally close and edge contacts and compare contacts which are also uh, down here greater than less than we can look at um, actual real values somewhere stored on the PLC uh, we have a coil which can be sent to an output it can be used to set the bit in memory or reset either the output or a bit in memory we have timers and counters so that when they are done uh, they will give an output and that output can be read uh, somewhere else. We also have counters. Okay, So uh, I just want to make a really simple program that would uh, just be a contact and we can relate these to actual uh, contacts on the PLC and let me show you how we can kind of see uh, how we would do that. Uh, we can go to our PLC and look at it this is the system configuration icon and here we have the um, DC sourcing PLC and we have the analog input and output module and we have a 24 volt AC uh, power supply that is powering uh, the, this module and this module and what we can do is we can look at the IO of this um, module and look at the actual registers. Okay, so here we have X01 all the way down to X08, oh, well, X001 all the way down to X008. And these are actual um, hardware um, values, and these are all the inputs here that you see on your PLC. See X1, X2, X3, da da da, down to X8, same as X1 to X8. And then we have these outputs Y1 down to Y6. Okay, and these are DC sourcing outputs where we'd have to apply a voltage between V0, I mean uh, V1 and common, which is ground, or V2 and ground. We can supply uh, the same voltage to these three outputs, Y1 through Y4, or through Y5 and Y6, um, based upon this supply uh, voltage. All right, so um, these are the inputs. Um, specifically and these are the outputs and they're all set to uh, regular output right now. Uh, we could also look at the analog input and output module and the four, four channels are input and they take from 0 to 10 volts and it actually scales them in the PLC from 0 to 100 and it places that data in this data register which is just uh, some variable in memory that you write to and you can have access to it when you get into your ladder logic diagram. Um, we can also look here and see that we have two outputs and the outputs are DF5 and DF6 so that's if we write a value from DF5 to DF6 that's between 0 and 100 it will give us an output voltage between 0 and 10 volts on that line and that's uh, the analog output. This is channel 1, so this would be DF4, uh, I think, and this would be DF5. Let's go back and make sure. This is DF5 and DF6. Okay. So if we write a value in the PLC program to memory for DF4, it'll send um, 
that scaled value out between 0 and um, 10 volts if we give it 0 to 100 and you can change the scaling as we just saw in that diagram. Um, this also gives us a this is kind of an aside but the power budget and how much we need to be able to uh, run this. Okay, We need 140 milliamps uh, total and that's what is shown here. Okay, um, So here this is saving the nicknames. Alright, so the reason I bring that up is because if I bring in a contact here like a normally open contact and I can come here to a bit address and you see that these are our X values that we just looked at and these are on the front of the PLC and these are just bits okay so if I had a relay uh, that was or if I have a signal that's sending data to this relay um, then and I said that, that it's a normally open contact and I actually get a voltage on here then it will change this state okay so I can say uh, if I get something, if I get an input on X1 of my PLC, then I can say come out here and give me an output on Y01. Okay, and if we go back to the PLC setup, we're basically saying um, if we go back to our system configuration, we're saying if we have an input on X1, which is normally open and somehow somebody gives us a, a signal, like a 24 volt signal, then we're going to energize the coil that is plugged into Y01, okay? And um, looks like we're gonna have to uh, save the nicknames again even though they were just saved. See, so you see how this says uh, Y01, this is normally opened, and it'll actuate, okay? So, um, Another thing we can do is we can actually detect the state of uh, Y01. Come down here and pick Y01. And we can see, oh, okay, now we can monitor this output. And if this output is high because this input is high, okay, then this is normally low. But when this goes high, then we can make this high and do something else. And let's say we want to count using a timer so uh, we'll start these are in milliseconds and we'll use uh, we have to pick a timer resource okay this is T1 it's just any timer okay we can have uh, I don't know like 500 different timers so this is the first timer and um, we are going to um, run this timer and we can just run it for we can either pick we can either read a data value, some value that we stored in memory, okay, or we can just actually put a number in here and we say we're going to run for uh, three seconds and then we're going to turn off. Okay, <clears throat> and then now we have another output which is T1. Okay, so after three seconds this will uh, turn on. Okay, so then we could actually look at. Uh, this value okay and we could pick come down here and pick T and go to T1 which is our timer that we just set and now um, the timer can now do something else and um, we can send an output okay and this output can actually be some value uh, some digital value Y okay and we can pick say um, the second the second output this time and um, make that high and then we could come down here and we can end we have to end the program so we'll just drag and end and then we can save the project and this will be uh, <clears throat> simple P PLC program okay <clears throat> and so what this is actually doing though it's replacing the functionality of an actual relay because we're monitoring this uh, state and if this state goes high then this PLC program is acting like a relay that if this state goes high it's it's like energizing the coil and giving you an output on 
y0, 1. When y0, 1, which is normally open, is closed, then power can go from this left rung and follow over into here. And then our timer will count uh, for uh, uh, three seconds. And after three seconds, it'll energize T1. T1, which is normally um, close, I mean normally open, will close, and then we'll get an output on uh, Y2, and then the program uh, will end. And that is a brief uh, overview of me trying to connect the concepts between these uh, solenoids and relays. This is your coil. When this goes high, it can change the state of these contacts. <clears throat> And then based upon the states of these contacts, they could go into other relays and they can change the states of uh, <clears throat> other things. All right. So this X01, although it's an input to the PLC, it's sort of like monitoring the context, the output context of a relay. Okay. And then the software acts as a relay and says, well, if this is high, we could treat this as an energized coil. Okay. That sends an output here to output on Y01. All right, so just a brief overview of trying to connect these concepts of the hardware to the software and why the software was written the way it was uh, with that hardware in mind. In my next video, I'll show you actually how to use this uh, hardware um, and this ladder logic to control or to turn an LED on.